Our discussion for today will just be focusing on the ultimate strength design of a single reinforced beam. We have different design parameters. We have the ultimate strength design and the working strength design. But we will be considering here or we will be focusing only on the ultimate strength design. Now, we all know that if a beam is subjected to a positive moment, and let's say this is your neutral axis, all parts of the beam above the neutral axis will be subjected to compressive stress, while the bottom part will be, cons will be subjected to tensile stress. Ngayon, dahil alam natin na mahina lang yung tensile capacity of the concrete, we will be assuming that the top part only undergoes the compressive stress while the bottom part the tensile the tens the tensile part below the neutral axis is carried by the steel reinforcement Ito yan. and we have here the dimensions of the concrete beam we have your breadth or yung lapad ng beam natin yung width and we have the distance d which is what we call the effective depth the effective depth is the distance from the outermost compression fiber hanggang sa centroid ng reinforcement. Remember, by definition, dapat nasa centroid siya ng reinforcement. So, kung meron tayong dalawang layers ng reinforcement, D must be up to the centroid of those reinforcement. Now, since this is the, the upper part of the beam subjected to the compressive stress, let's say that is Fc prime, where Fc prime is what we called the specified compressive stress, compressive strength rather. Now, this is parabolic in form, while since this is just a tensile reinforcement, so that is the, the tensile capacity of the steel reinforcement. Now, the ACI and the NECP allows us to analyze our beam into an equivalent rectangular compression block. However, rather than its magnitude to be FC prime, the magnitude of that compression block is just equal to 85% of FC prime. Now, kanina, yung depth natin ito is the depth of the neutral axis. So let's say, again, this is your neutral axis, no? With a distance C. But in the uh, rectangular compression block, the depth is only A, where A is just equal to beta C. By the way, the rectangular comp compression block is known as the Whitney equivalent compression block. Now, and then we have here your tensile reinforcement. Now, obviously, since this is a tensile reinforcement, if this is a force, let's say this is force T. And we all know from our mechanics of deformable bodies that stress is just equal to force over area. Therefore, force is just equal to stress times the area. So let's say the stress there is what we call your Fy, where Fy is your yield strength. Of steel, or your reinforcement, multiplied obviously by the area. In this case, our area of this reinforcement is represented with A sub S. Okay, so obviously, since this is also a stress, it can be also represented by a force. Let's say this is C for compressive force. And since this is a rectangle, it, it is actually passing or acting on a rectangular part of the section. So, ibig sabihin, to determine the value of C, stress lang ulit multiplied by the area. Ano yung stress? So, obviously, the stress is just yung 0 0.85 of Fc prime. While yung area na tinatamaan niya, so remember this is depth A, so this is also A, yung area na tinatamaan niya is yung area ng rectangle dito, which is A and B. 
so that it will just be equal to AB. And as you can see, since that force is acting on a rectangular surface or rectangular area, yung location ng force na yan must be at the centroid of that rectangle. And we all know that the centroid of the rectangle is just at height over 2. So since the height is A, obviously the distance from the top is A over 2. Therefore, the distance between the compressive force and the tensile force is just D minus A over 2. And for us to retain equilibrium, let's say if we take the summation of forces horizontal, it must be in equilibrium. Otherwise, we will be analyzing this in dynamic conditions. So since we, we are analyzing this in static condition, all forces must be in equilibrium. So if we take the summation of forces horizontal, it must be equal to zero. So let's have forces to the right must be equal to forces to the left. So we have here your tension equals compression. So since we have here, pwede pala nating sabihin na yung tens tension part or tensile force is equal to the compressive force. So, ano ba yung tawag natin sa statics? Let's go back in our statics of rigid bodies. What do we call two parallel forces of equal magnitude but of opposite direction? They are known as what we call the couple. So, meaning, since we have a compressive force going to the left and we have a tensile force going to the right, equal magnitude, kasi nga dapat maritin natin yung equilibrium with a certain distance of d minus a over 2. Therefore, these forces form what we call a couple. So, let's say this is your, your couple force. And that is, let's say, mn, or what we call the nominal moment capacity. Okay, so therefore, mn here is just equal to, it's either your compressive force multiplied by the couple arm, that's d minus a over 2. Or, since c is just equal to t, we can also say that it is t multiplied by d minus a over 2. And that is how we compute mn. Again, m in here is your nominal moment capacity. Therefore, it is the capacity of the structure for flexure or the capacity of your beam for flexure. Now, let's say you want to compute MN in terms of C. So we have your MN. Remember that C is equal to 0 0.85 FC prime AB multiplied by D minus A over 2 or it can be AS FY multiplied by D minus A over 2. So these are our formulas that we can use in determining the moment capacity of our beam section. Now, so parang dapat ma-determine ma natin especially paano ba natin malalaman kung anong part ng structure natin yung under compression saka under tension why is it important remember meron tayong dalawang klase ng material meron tayong concrete at the same time we have what we call the reinforcement okay kaya tayo nag reinforcement kasi sabi nga natin kanina yung concrete natin has a very minimum capacity to resist tensile stress so dahil doon, kaya ginagamitan natin siya ng reinforcement para yung bakal mismo, yung sasalo, ng tensile stress. Okay? Now, syempre, kailangan nating malaman what part of the beam or hanggang saan doon sa area ng beam yung under compression. Alin doon yung under tension? Para ma-determine natin yun, kailangan pala natin ma-determine yung depth ng compression block. Kasi sa alam natin, Na, eh, sorry, the depth of the neutral axis. Kasi alam natin that if we know the, the, the location of the neutral axis, all part of the structure above the neutral axis is under compression if the beam is subjected to positive moment. So, kailangan natin siyang ma-identify. Okay? So, paano kaya natin yung malalaman? Now, sabi natin kanina, we have 
C is equal to T from our equilibrium equation. And remember, C is 0.85 FC prime AB. Again, here is, AB here is the area of, area po yan, nung concrete, no? na tinatamaan nung compressive stress. And it is equal to ASFY. So, we can determine the value of A. Remember, A is the depth of the compression block. So, it is just equal to ASFY over 0 0.85 of FC prime. B. Now, as you can see, we need to determine the value of A. So, after determining the value of A, we all know that A is just equal to, sabi natin kanina, beta 1C. Okay? So, this is beta 1C. So, in that case, we can now compute for the depth of the neutral axis or the location of the neutral axis from the compression most fiber. So, it's just equal to A divided by beta 1. Pero ano po, po yung beta 1? Okay? Beta 1 is normally 0 0.85. But, that is if your FC prime is less than or equal to 28 MPa. Okay. What if lumaki na siya dyan? Okay. So, if your FC prime or what we call the specified compressive strength of the concrete is now greater than 28 MPa, your beta 1 will be equal to 0 0.85 according to the code. No? 0.85 nababawasan daw yan ng 0 0.05 for every 7 megapascal na excess doon sa FC prime natin. So, based on the code, okay, it is stated that for every uh, excess of 7 megapascal from 28 megapascal of your FC prime, yung 0.85 daw natin is nababawasan ng 0 0.05. However, hindi siya pwedeng bumaba ng 0.65. So, meaning the minimum value must be 0.65. So, meaning, yung value pala natin ng beta 1 must always be greater than or equal to 0 0.65. So, that is the value of beta 1. Okay? And we need always to remember that. Kasi minsan or kadalasan, nalilimutan natin siyang i-apply. Especially for high-strength concrete or for, let's say, when we are computing for pre-stress concrete, no? pag dumating na kayo sa pre-stress concrete, normally, yung ginagamit natin na FC prime doon is 35. So, obviously, it exceeds 28. Kung nalilimutan minsan na, ina-apply natin yung beta 1. Now, let's now also consider, okay, balik ulit tayo dito, no? I-copy lang natin. We have here your the depth of the compression block A equals ASFY over 0 0.85 FC prime B. Okay, so we will introduce another uh, parameter and that is what we call your rho. No? Rho is what we call the steel reinforcement ratio. Yung steel reinforcement ratio natin from the term steel reinforcement ratio, meaning it's just the ratio between your steel area or AS divided by the area of the concrete beam. No? So that is your BD. So it's just the effective area of the concrete beam. So in this case, para, paano natin siya makukuha dito? No? So pwede ko itong i-multiply the numerator and the denominator by D. So that will just give you A equals ASFYD over 0 0.85 FC prime BD. So in that case, this is your ASBD. So A is just equal to raw FYD over 0.85 FC prime. Okay. So again, 
I will introduce another parameter and that is what we call your omega. Omega is what we call the steel reinforcement index. In which the steel reinforcement index is actually equal to rho Fy over Fc prime. So, kung substitute ko ulit siya din sa formula natin in determining the depth of the compression block, that will just give you omega d over 0.85. Okay? Now, balik tayo dun sa value natin ng remember, tandaan lang natin itong mga to ha? Balik, lang, balik tayo dun sa formula natin ng moment. Sabi natin kanina, to determine the nominal moment capacity in terms of compression. No? So that's C multiplied by your couple arm D minus A over 2. So let's substitute yung value ng C. Sabi natin it's 0 0.85 of FC prime AB multiplied by D minus A over 2. However, A is now equal to Omega D over 0 0.85. So, substitute natin. We have 0 0.85 FC prime B. Substitute natin ngayon yung A. No? So, that is Omega D over 0 0.85 multiplied by D minus, again, Omega D over 0 0.85 times 2. Okay. So, MN is equal to, well, let me cancel out. Pwede kong i-factor out yung D. So, that will give you FC prime BD squared multiplied by 1 minus 0.85 times 2. So, that is 0.85 times 2. Inverse, that is 1.7. Inverse natin. That will give you 0 0.59. No? So, this is minus 0 0.59. So, nakimutan natin omega dito. No? So, we have also here your omega. Okay. So, this can also be used as the formula of to determine the moment. But however, this can be used only for singly reinforcement. So, yung mga later discussions natin, mas maganda kung ang gagamitin na lang natin is yung basic natin dun sa statics na the moment or the nominal moment is just equal to the coupled force. Now, we have here another parameter, let's say Rn, it is just equal to Fc prime omega multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.59 omega. So, in that case, Mn is just equal to Rn BD squared. Rn is known as what we call the coefficient of resistance. Okay? Now, imagine, if I will distribute this, magkakaroon ako dito ng omega, tapos dito sa term na ito, magkakaroon ako ng omega squared. So, in that case, magkakaroon ako ng quadratic equation. Okay? Now, kung magkakaroon ako ng quadratic equation, pwede akong gumamit ng formula natin ng uh, quadratic formula. Also, we remember that omega is actually equal to rho Fy over Fc prime. So, using those quadratic formula, we can calculate that rho in terms of Rn is just equal to 0 0.85 of Fc prime over Fy multiplied by 1 minus the square root of 1 minus 2Rn over 0 0.85 of Fc prime. Again, we can only use this for, for singular reinforcement. Okay? So, this is another formula in determining your rho. Now, kung papansin nyo, sobrang halaga pala nung rho natin or yung 
steel reinforcement ah, sorry steel reinforcement ratio now ano ano ba yung steel reinforcement ratio no so remember steel reinforcement ratio is actually the ratio between yung area natin ng ng bakal over doon sa effective area natin ng concrete so it's very important so it's actually based on the code has minimum and maximum value okay so doon muna tayo sa minimum value natin ng steel ratio okay so according to the code we have two formulas for raw minimum so yung raw minimum natin is equal to 1.4 over fy or square root of fc prime over 4 fy whichever is whichever is larger okay pero yung technique dito is paano ba natin malalaman na sino yung mas magiging malaki kasi lagi natin iko compare okay so, para makita natin kagad kung ano yung technique or ano kagad yung gagamitin natin na formula ng raw minimum. So, pwede natin silang equate. So, we have 1.4 over Fy equals square root of Fc prime over 4 Fy. So, cancel Fy. As you can see, we can compute for Fc prime. And that is 1.4 times 4, then squared. Okay, so that is 31.36. So, meaning, mag equal yung dalawang formula na yan ng 31.36. It also means that if Fc prime is greater than 31.36, sakalang mag-govern yung raw minimum na square root of Fc prime over 4 Fy. Sa ibang book, it's actually 0 0.25 square root of Fc prime over Fy. So, same lang yun. Kasi 1 fourth tsaka 0 0.25. So, tatandaan natin, nag-govern -go lang itong value na to if your Fc prime is greater one, greater than 31.36. Other than that, kung for example, your Fc prime is 20.7, 21, or 28, automatic, ang mag-govern mag na raw minimum is 1.4 over Kasi hindi pa naman natin na-retain na atin itong value na to Based doon sa derivation natin. Okay. So, let's now consider yung raw minimum, ay yung raw max natin. So, kanina, we have yung concrete beam natin. Let's say this is your concrete beam. Again, this is your AS. This is your effective depth D. Then we have your B here. Okay, now. So, alam natin in our mechanics of deformable bodies that if a beam is or experiencing stress, obviously, magkakaroon siya ng strain. Kasi sabi nga ni, sabi nga ni according to the hooks, no, that we have, uh, that the stress is directly proportional to the strain. So we have here, let's say this is the strain diagram. Okay. Let's say this is your neutral axis. So as you can see, neutral axis, zero stress. So kung zero stress, obviously zero din yung strain. Okay. 0 .00, 0 0.003 is the maximum uh, strain ng concrete natin. So let's have here your strain ng Bakal. So, let's say strain S. Okay? Then, this is your distance C. So, since this is D, yung mula dito hanggang dito, obviously, this is D minus C. Okay? Now, okay? So, we can have here your ratio in proportion. So, we have here 0 0.003 divided by, uh, let's say, have your strain ng S equals uh, C over D minus C where that is 0 0.003 times D minus C equals strain ng bakal multiplied by C. Now, bakit natin ito kinukuha? Okay? So, 
Kasi, sabi nga natin kanina, balik tayo dun sa isang bali natin. Sabi natin kanina that rho is actually equal to AS over BB. Okay? Or we can say that we have A is just equal to we have A is just equal to rho FYD over 0.85 FC prime. So, lalagay ko siya ulit ha. So, we have here A equals rho FYD over 0.85 of FC prime. Or, or, okay, lagay din, we can solve here rho. In that case, rho is equal to what? Rho is 0.85 of FC prime A divided by FYD. Okay? Now, we all know that rho, uh, that rather A is just equal to beta C. So, we can say also that rho is equal to 0 0.85 FC prime multiplied by beta 1 C divided by F1D. Now, let's substitute C galing dito. Okay? Dito tayo. So, ay, sorry, dito pala. Okay? So, we can actually distribute this. This is 0 0.003 of D minus 0 0.003 of C equals strain. Okay? So, let's consider that the reinforcement will, will yield first, no? So, that is actually Fy over Es multiplied by C. Okay, so let's compute for C. Pwede kong ilipat yung C dito. That will give you C multiplied by we have here 0 0.003 plus Fy over Es equals 0 0.003 of D. Okay. However, to attain the maximum loading or to attain ah, sorry to to have the maximum reinforcement according to the code the strain of the steel must be equal to 0 0.004 okay so that pala kahit di na natin to substitute no so anyways magagamit naman natin siya later we can have here your uh, c multiplied by 0 0.003 ito yung strain natin so that will give you plus 0 0.004 equals 0 0.003 of D. Or we can say that C is just equal to, so <coughs> we can have uh, here 3 over 7 of D. Okay, so substitute natin dito. We have here rho equals 0 0.85 of FC prime beta 1 times 3 over 7 D divided by FYT. So as you can see, we can cancel out D. Therefore, this is 0 0.85 of FC prime over FY times beta 1 times 3 over 7. Okay? Or, in other cases or in other book, they are simplifying it. No? So as you can see, we have 3 times 0 0.85 divided by 7. That will give you 51 over 140 times beta 1 times FC prime over FY. So that is actually your rho max. Okay? Now, tandaan yung mga formula na yun, We have here your rho minimum and we have here also your rho maximum. Okay? Now, let's discuss first Ano-ano ba yung mga design conditions na kinoconsider natin? Okay? So, or yung nangyayari sa structure natin. So, let's write first your design conditions. Okay? So, we have a condition, or what we call number one, under-reinforced. Under-reinforced beam. We have the balance condition. And we have the over reinforced. So, 
So, obviously, from the terms, no, madali lang naman silang tandaan, when we say balance condition, it is where your reinforcement and your concrete uh, yield simultaneously. Okay, when we say under reinforce, it's the steel reinforcement that yields first before the concrete. And when we say over reinforce, dahil nga over reinforce, sobrang bakal. Okay, nauna nag-fail ngayon yung concrete natin kaysa doon sa sa baka. Now, obviously, we need to maintain balance condition. But it's very impossible in construction na ma-maintain natin yung balance condition. Una-una, hindi naman, kung ang makukumpute natin na, na area ng bakal is ganto tapos when we determine yung number ng bakal, ang lumabas is 3 point something, hindi naman tayo pwedeng maglagay ng 3 point something na bakal. So, we always round it up. Okay, ganun din when we are computing the area of the section. Pag ang lumabas na, na area ng section based on our computation is let's say 211.12, you will not put 211.12 during construction. Hindi ka maglalagay ng ganong, ng ganong forma. No? So, all, we always round up. Okay, so in that case, hindi natin mapapanatili yung uh, exactly na balance condition. So, it's either we it will be under-reinforced or over-reinforced. Okay? But ano ba yung balance condition? So, since it is in balance condition, sabi natin kanina, the concrete and the steel reinforcement simultaneously yields. So, let's compute now, ano ba yung mga conditions kapag balance? So, let's compute what we call the balance steel reinforcement ratio. No? This is very important when we are designing. Why? Kasi sabi nga natin, we need to attain as much as possible balance. Okay? So, dyan tayo dapat laging magbabase. Okay? So, kanina, we have your formula of rho based on the strain diagram. Ang sabi natin, yung rho, okay, yung rho natin is equal to 0 0.85 of Fc prime beta 1c divided by Fyd. Okay? Now, since it is now in balance condition, kung babalik tayo dun sa strain diagram natin, okay, so this is again 0 0.003. This is your strain now ng bakal. Okay. Again, this is your effective depth D. Pero, since this is C, this is D minus C. Okay. So, let's use ratio and proportion again. So, we have 0 0.003 over C, or let's say, ito na lang yung gamitin ko, equals C over D minus C. So, again, in that case, we have here your 0 0.003 of D minus 0 0.003 of C equals strain ng bakal multiplied by C. Okay, so since it is in balance condition, we can assure that the reinforcement are actually yielding or will actually yield. So in that case, pwede kong sabihin that the strain of of the reinforcement when we, when we define strain sabi natin it's just stress over the modulus of elasticity E no? so in that case dahil mag yield siya that we can use Fy over ES okay so solving for the value of C first we have here your uh, lipat ko sa kabila so that will give you C multiplied by uh, 0 0.003 plus Fy over ES okay equals 0.003 of T so as you can see para mawala itong denominator na to we can multiply it on both sides of the equation and we all know that ES for steel or the modulus of elasticity of steel is 200 gigapascal or that is 200,000 MPa so, substituting or cross-multiplying, this will become 200,000 times 0 0.003. That will give you 600. So, C multiplied by 600 plus Fy equals 600D. 
or we can say that C is just equal to 600 D over 600 plus Fy. So let's now substitute it here. So we have here your row balance is equal to 0 0.85 of Fc prime beta 1 over Fyd multiplied by 600D over 600 plus Fy. So you can see we can cancel D. Therefore, row balance is just equal to 0 0.85 of Fc prime beta 1 multiplied by 600 divided by Fy times 600 plus Fy. So this is how we compute for your raw balance. Okay, now. Um, daming parameters, no? But we need, we, need, we need now focus on the nominal capacity. No? So kanina sabi natin, MN or the nominal moment capacity is just equal to C multiplied by D minus A over 2 or that's T multiplied by D minus A over 2 or kahit yung derived natin formula na may Rn or yung omega. Okay, now in the start of uh, all ultimate stress design, no, kahit sa LRFD, ang ginagamit natin is we have here your actual load or when we are designing, the actual load must be less than or equal to doon sa resistance load. When we say resistance load, or when we say the actual load, these are actually your factored loads. So when we say factored loads, kung meron kang dead load sa live load lang, tas uniform load sa beam, that is actually your 1.2 of your dead load plus 1.6 of your live load. Okay? But when we say resistance load, this is actually your nominal moment capacity in terms of lecture or in terms of beam. That is actually your nominal moment capacity multiplied by what we call the strength reduction factor. Okay. In 2001, NACP and... Uh, or when we say when uh, we can say before the 2010 NACP and before the 2002 ACI, the strength reduction factor for for moment is only equal to 0 0.9. No? But uh, they have studied that hindi siya pwedeng equal lang sa 0 0.9. What if hindi nagil yung bakal? What if uh, nagil yung bakal? So what if at balance condition lang? Because we have we have what we call the conditions of uh, tension control. We have also your compression control. Okay. When we say tension control, the strain of the reinforcement exceeds or equal to 0 0.005. Okay. While the strain for compression control does not exceed or just equal to uh, 0 0.002. Remember, hindi po siya laging 0 0.002. Ah. It is only applicable if we are using grade 60 of reinforcement, meaning that is actually 400 MPA or 60 KSI. Okay. In the code, uh, ina-accept yung 4... 413.7, 414, 415, up to 420 megapascal to be under grade 60. So, we will be using 0 0.002. Kasi nga naman, for example, we have, let's say, 414. Normally, no? Sa mga problems na nakikita nyo, that is your stress, or your yield strength, rather, divided by the modulus of elasticity. Okay. As you can see, Okay, it's still 0 0.002. No? So, ang ginag uh, yun pa rin yung inaalaw ng code. Kahit di mo na siya baguhin. But if you will be exceeding uh, 420, or let's say you will be using other uh, yield strength of the reinforcement, let's say 276, 345, or 315, 
obviously we will not be using 0 0.002 but for the sake of our discussion let's say we will be using grade 60 okay and when we say compression control it will not exceed the strain produced or the strain limit because of the yield strength of your steel reinforcement okay so yun yung tinatawag natin now there are instances na it is beyond compression controlled pero hindi siya umabot ng tension control that is what we call the transition zone and we will be discussing it later okay but when as as much as possible pag nagdi-design tayo we need to focus na or we need our, our desire is actually maging tension controlled yung structure natin why Kasi kung magiging tension control siya, mataas yung ductility ng concrete natin. Unlike kapag compression control, brittle yung uh, characteristic niya. Okay? So, these are yung mga kailangan nyo i-consider. Now, i-drawing natin. Let's say, hatiin natin to into three regions. Let's say this is your compression control zone. This is your transition period. And this is your uh, tension control. Okay. So, paano ba nakaka-apekto yung tension control, compression control, tsaka transition zone? So, it will greatly affect what we call the strength reduction factor. Okay? So, let's say this axis is your strain and this axis is your reduction factor. So, sabi natin kanina, we have mainly two. No? Tension controlled and compression controlled. So, sabi natin compression controlled kapag hindi lumagpas ng 0 0.002. Again, this is your strain ng bakal. Okay, kung ano man yung yield strength niya. No? So, this is 0 0.005. So, again, kapag under siya ng compression control, the reduction factor according to the code is 0 0.65. While if it is under tension control, the reduction factor is 0 0.9. Okay, and for transition period or the transition zone, it just actually says na it is linearly increasing from 0.65 to 0.9. Okay? So, ano yung gagawin natin kapag under transition zone? Gagawin natin yung term zone. Okay? So, let's just say we will be considering this point. Tapos kunin natin yung actual na strain ng bakal or let's say strain S or strain T no? then paano daw natin makukuha yung reduction factor na kailangan natin okay so dahil nagbabago-bago tong term na to it's easier na ang gamitin kong unit is or notation is not 0 0.002 but rather strain Y okay so we can do here interpolation so we have here your reduction factor, strength reduction factor, minus 0 0.65, divide by, we have here your 0 0.9, minus 0 0.65, equals, we have here your strain ng S, yung actual, minus, we have here, rather than using 0 0.002, I will use strain of the reinforcement, yung yield strength, strain, then we have here your 0 0.05 minus again strain y. Okay. Now we all know that strain is just equal to stress over the modulus of elasticity. So I can say that we have here your phi minus 0 0.65 over 0 0.9 minus 0 0.65. Okay. That will give you 0 0.25. Pero check na rin natin. Ay, sorry, 0 0.9 minus 0 0.65. Okay, that will give you 0 0.25 equals. So, this will become Fs. Okay. 
let's multiply on both sides, on, on the numerator rather, on the denominator yung E. So, times E, magiging Fs lang to. Ito magiging Fy. This will become 200,000 times 0 0.005. That will give you 1,000. Minus Fy. So, in this case, your strength reduction factor your strength reduction factor will just be equal to uh, multiply ko to, dipot ko sa kabila, that will give you 0 0.65 plus 0 0.25 multiplied by Fs minus Fy over 1000 minus Fy. So this is the formula for the reduction factor. Now, meaning, in this case, Para ma-determine pala natin or para ma-compare natin yung beam natin, yung adequacy ng beam natin, sabi natin kanina that the actual loading must be less than or uh, equal to sa resistance load. So in this case, let's say MU is your factored moment, so it is just be, must be less than or equal to dun sa strength reduction factor multiplied by the dominant moment. Okay? And those are that we need to consider in our uh, or in analyzing reinforced concrete. In our next video, I will give example both investigation and, and design. So that will be all for now.